Hey, what's up? Nathan here from BH Studios. Welcome back to another tutorial for uh, XNA. And in this tutorial, we're going to discuss this update to the screen system. Many people have been requesting that we update the screen system to have a transition animation between when we activate the submenu and deactivate the submenu. So when we're going back to the parent screen. So I've updated the sample, the coding, uh, the basic screen system, DLL, I've updated those to have this functionality and this video will show you how to use that functionality. Okay, so just like before, if you want to create a menu screen, you have to create a derivative of the menu screen class and something useful what the menu screen is in this case it's the main menu screen that does this functionality so we create a derivative of a menu screen called main menu screen and if you looked at the sample before everything's pretty much basically the same except for I created a float submenu speed so we can control how fast the transition is when we activate the submenu and when we deactivate the submenu so we have a speed of 10. You can increase this to make it faster, decrease this to make it slower. Uh, just manipulate that value if you want to. So now actually using this functionality, we I created two events in the menu screen class itself. So you do not have to worry about how I did this, just how to use it is what you're worried about. Just create these two events on submenu and on restore just add a new event handler to those and use whatever method you want in this case I called mine main menu screen underscore on submenu and on restore it's a good idea if you do one of these you want to do both of them because it the way it's set up right now is that if you do not do the other one, like if you just want it to fade out, it will currently not be able to restore to its normal operations. So, if you do one of them at this current time, I will be trying to think of ways to make this as automatic as possible. But at this time, if you do one of them, please do both of them. Otherwise, your screen will not operate normally. Okay, so let's talk about the on submenu first because that will be the first thing that is called when we click start submenu or we click something that has a submenu. This is what is called. So, this is an event. So, we signed up for that event call with this method. So whenever the event is thrown, this method is called. So this is completely customizable to whatever your whatever you want to do for your transition. If you want to manipulate the opacity of the entries, you can. If you want to make it fly a certain direction, you can. And it's completely customizable. For this sample, I decided to create the transition from if you see where my mouse pointer is, every entry starting from where my mouse pointer is will fade to the left outside of the game window. It'll go in this direction and it will go outside of the game window. And once that is done, once every entry is outside of the game window, we need to call operate normally and freeze the screen. We need to freeze the screen in order to not allow input to and manipulate the screen because the sub menu should be the only menu that should have input focus at this point so we just freeze the screen and now we're ready to use the sub menu okay so if you want to do it the same way I did it which is fade make every entry fade to the left or move to the left you can do the same thing I did here 
and I wanted to make sure they were completely outside the game window so I had to use the position at X plus the bounding rectangle dot width. That way I got to the right side of the entry instead of the left side. Position at X is the left side of the entry, it's where the text starts in the horizontal direction. So I add the width so I can get to where the text ends. That position, that X value, where the text ends. I do not want to see any text on the from this screen on the game when I activate the submenu. On restore basically does the opposite. Instead of decreasing the position, I increase the position. Now every entry has a default position. The default position is when, whenever the entry is not being transitioned, not being updated, not being manipulated, not being transformed in any way, the default position is where do you want this entry to default if nothing's going on? So the default position handles basically where we had it before. So if that position is less than the end default position, again, this is customizable. I just did it horizontally, so I'm using dot X here. You can use dot Y and make it go up or down if you want to. So if we still need to update any entry, it still needs to be restoring. So we set a boolean value to true. If that boolean value is false, we need to update operate normally. Now we call freeze screen here. When we do on restore, we need to activate the screen again. Okay, so now let's look at the end result. Okay, so that intro, I increased the intro screen's time for uh, a sample, and it's still there, so that's why it took so long. Okay, so now we have the main menu screen. So now let's look at the submenu entry. And when we click the submenu entry, it's going to do the on a submenu event, which means it's going to move every entry here, these four entries here, to the left. It's going to move every entry to the left. So now all we have visible is the submenu entry. The single entry we have on the submenu. So now if I click back to parent menu or escape, it will bring back the main menu entry. Okay. So that's pretty much it on how to use that event, those two events. And for right now, use both of them. If you use one of them, use both of them. And we'll think of a way to make this as automated as possible. But anyway, those that requested this sort of feature, I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you get some use out of it. And if you can think of any cool animations, let me know. It'll be nice to see what people come up with on the animations. And you'll have access to this download in the description, as well as the SVN repositories. Alright, so that's it for this tutorial. We still have a lot of tutorials to do this weekend. So, there will be three more tonight. Two Photoshop and one XNA tutorial. I hope to see you next time.